don't you be afraid joy comes in the morning I said troubles they don't last away for there's a friend in Jesus That you are with us all the way through. Right on this world once again this morning. I will declare and declare that Lord God Almighty, our life will show forth your praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what we may be seeing at this moment. It doesn't matter what we may be feeling at this moment. It doesn't matter what we may be hearing at this moment. Your word, Lord God Almighty, takes preeminence over every situation. Thank you once again for you moving now on our behalf. Victory is certain at the end of the day. Our praise and adoration we give unto you forever, Lord. The one who owns our future is said. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. 
Blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. That is this song, I don't know if you know it, I want us to sing it. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Son of God. I believe he died and rose again. I believe he paid for us all. And I believe he's here now. Standing in a me. Yeah, with the power to heal now. And the grace to forgive. I believe in you, Lord. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again. And I believe you paid for us all, Jesus. I believe you are now. Standing in a me, you will have power to you. And the grace for me. I believe you are here now, Lord Jesus. I believe you died and rose again. I believe you paid for us all. And I believe you are here right now, Lord God, Lord Jesus. Standing in our midst. You are here with the power to heal. You are here with the power to save. You are here with the power to bless. You are here with the power to deliver. Blessed be your holy name, Jehovah Lord. Take all the glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Proceed with us as we proceed this morning. And all the glory shall be up to you forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Once we go to the top of your way, Jesus' precious name, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Let's rest together for the choir as you all have this just come in God's presence. Hallelujah. I'm walking by faith. I don't know about you. There is a part that the Lord said, the Bible said, walks in us. That brings to pass things that are not to bring them to be. I want us to continue on our study. I will need the ushers with the mic. I will need, I think I can come and have this on two mics. One on this side, one on this side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I've come to understand that when we have a proper understanding of what the church is all about, our work with God and our assignment in his vineyard will be much more easier to be fulfilled. The English man says, when the reason for something is not known, for something is not known, what happens? See, the abuse is inevitable. Hallelujah. So last week Wednesday, we looked at the, we continued to look at church, part two. The media team, I wanted to correct that on the post, he said part three. The Mind you. Hallelujah. Amen. Our text is still from Acts chapter 2, verse 40 to 47, which we're going to read very quickly. For it, Acts 2, 40 to 47. Hallelujah. And we're going to outline one of part two, looking at the categories of people in the church. The categories of people in the church. On Wednesday, by God's grace, we look at the first category. On 
for one semester. Or those of you who joined first category, the categories of people in the church. So last week Wednesday we studied that. Huh? The categories of people in the based on our study of Wednesday. The chief, shepherd, and who is the chief shepherd? Use the mic now. Let's hear what you are saying. If you are confident of what you are saying, yes, you get it correct. Is the chief shepherd, and who is the chief shepherd? The Lord Jesus Christ is the chief. The chief. Okay. What next? Then we talked about the shepherd. We talked about the shepherd, and the shepherd is who? The pastor. And we look at the works that the pastor does. And also, no, before we go further, we, we spoke about some things that the chief shepherd, the relationship must have with the sheep. We mentioned five of them. So who can give us the highlights of those five? Um, of the relationship the chief shepherd, we must... Connect with, with the chief shepherd as chief to the vineyard. Talk about intimacy and knowing him. Intimacy and knowing him, okay. Leadership. We talk about leadership that he wants to lead us, all right. Feeding the flock. Feeding the flock, okay. Hearing from him. Hearing from him. Then assignments. Then assignment. Those are the four Five. cardinal points that as a chief you need to relate with, with the with the chief shepherd, all right? So we talk about the shepherd itself that represents the pastor, all right? And we concluded with a statement. What other thing do you want to add for those who are around? I don't want to call them. So yes, God bless you. Um, there's one quote you said. You said we can succeed with a wrong barber or tailor or tailor, but we cannot go far in God's purpose with the wrong pastor ministering to us. Hallelujah. You can succeed with the wrong barber or wrong uh, stylist doing your hair. You can succeed with the wrong tailor giving you sure where you needed the uh, bag or whatever. Hallelujah. But you cannot succeed with the wrong pastor. You can't go for a destiny with the wrong pastor ministering to you. That's why you must find your pastor. You must find a church where God has said this is your own base. How many of us came from a place this morning? You have a home, a roof over your head. Eh? Sir? Ev no, that's everybody. You, go, you speak for yourself. As long as you have a roof over your head, let me see your head up. Grave to Jesus. So that means you have a home. So as you have a home physically, you also have a home spiritually. Hallelujah. The church is a spiritual fold. And everybody must belong to a family that you call this my church. Hallelujah. When you say this is my, that means you personify it as your own base. Hallelujah. For, for Guyana or for Nigeria, we say, those are Nigeria. We say I'm what? I'm a Nigerian. Forget about some things that happened that some of us want to deny. And leave that aside. There are great Nigerians all over the world doing massive things for God. Affecting lives. In fact, in the U.S., one of the, the best doctors they have there, they are Nigerians. Dr. Duro Toye. How many of us have heard about him? The one that conducted surgery for, a, for baby, how many months old baby in the womb? I think it was brain surgery or something like that. And put the baby back inside the womb and it developed and was given back to Nigeria. You forget about the, the little percentage that are the bad eggs. Hallelujah. My Guyana say yes, great Guyana. You are proud to be called, to be called a Guyanese as a citizen of this nation. Anywhere you go, so you must be proud to say, this is my 
church, I have a church, I have a base. I did not just fall down from heaven. Hallelujah. All right? So we say you can succeed with the wrong Baba. You can succeed with the wrong what? Taylor. Or you can't go for influence of destiny or purpose in life with the wrong person ministering to you or in the wrong place. All right? So we continue today with the third category. First category is what? The chief shepherd. And who is the chief shepherd? Let's communicate. Jesus Christ. And what's the next category of the person, the people in the church? The shepherd. And who is the shepherd? The pastor. All right. And we are looking at the third category. The, the third category is the sheep. The sheep. The sheep simply means the church member. Let's read John 10, 16. And we'll take Psalm 23, verse 1 to see which one of us can even recite of it. Hallelujah. John 10, 16. I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I will bring them also. They will listen to my voice. They will be one flock and they will be one flock with one shepherd. I have other sheep too. They are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. This is just guys speaking. Who must bring them? They say, I must bring them also. How will he bring them now that he's physically not here on earth? How will he bring them? He was saying this when he was physically here on earth. So now that he's not physically here on earth, how will he bring this sheep into the sheep fold? Let's talk now. I'm not preaching. Okay? I want interaction. How will he do it? God allow me this. With the help of other shepherd or sheep. Hallelujah, that's true. With the help of what? The shepherd and the sheep. We'll get to that later on. He said what? He said, the sheep will what? They will listen to my voice. So the question I kept asking is this. Whose voice will listen to? Or whose voice? Remember we said something about the sheep through the shepherd? There was a point he made that the sheep will hear whose voice through the shepherd. The sheep will hear the chief shepherd's voice through the shepherd. So when the pastor is ministering, hallelujah. That's what I look at it, I say, pastor is talking about me. I say, you're not serious. You know, there's some people they say, pastor is preaching about me. Who are you? You're so, so special. Eh? That you are the one that is the talk of the town. Hallelujah. The word of God comes. At times when we stand here, what we say may not be what we have put down. As it gives us utterance, we speak. So if the word is coming and, and that's the truth. So many a times when a, a pastor minister or a minister comes here to minister and after ministry say, okay, you want to dedicate your life to Christ, you want to give your life to Christ, or you want to do this, you want to do that, there are some who do you think those who that came out came to meet? The pastor or the best or the preacher? Who did they come to meet? Because they heard God speaking to their heart through the, the speaker. Are, are we getting what I'm trying to express? The preacher comes to minister, and I, and as he or she is ministering, the sheep is hearing the voice of the chief shepherd, the voice of Jesus. Through what the preacher is preaching. And at the end of the day, they commit themselves to Jesus. All right, let's go on. He said, they will listen to my voice. And there will be one flock with one shepherd. So let's go on to Psalm 23, 1 to 6. Psalm 23. One to six. Who is reading? To feed, to guide, 
and to shield that me. That's the amplified. Yeah. Aha, uh-huh, I love that. I shall not want. He lets me down in green pastures. Hold on, let's, let's not run. Why will you not want? Because he will lead, he will feed. And shield me. And shield. He will lead, he will feed, and shield. That is if you make him your shepherd. He will feed you. He will what? He will lead you. And he will protect you. He will shield you. Right? Go on. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide. The your comfort rod to protect and your staff to, ra- to guide. Have you seen when a shepherd, have you seen a physical uh, shepherd leading the flock before? Yeah. You see them with their rod? Yeah, yeah. So when you say he leads, he does what? Eh? What do they do at times when the sheep or the flock is going the other way? They use the rod to say, hey! And as soon as they use the rod, the sheep knows what is being said. And they, they fall in line. Go ahead, sir. They comfort and console me. Mm. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Hallelujah. You have anointed and re- refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Amen. What will guarantee you dwelling in the presence of the Lord forever starts from the beginning if he is the one leading you. You can't dwell in the place where you have not allowed him to lead you. Hallelujah. So the question she was asked is, who is your leader? Who is leading you? Say, the Lord is my shepherd. And we analyze him. I'm sure that he leads, he feeds, and he shields. Now let's go because of time. Let's look at the characteristics of true of two sheep. Number one, they want to be shepherded. What do you understand by that? A true sheep wants to be what? Shepherded. What do you understand? To be guided, okay. To be led, that's synonym. <laughs> yes. Blossom. What does it mean to be shepherded? To be protected, okay? They want a shepherd over them. They have a to have what? And higher to have to be under oversight. They want to be shepherd. They want to be under an oversight. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move on because, like I said, time is not on our side. True sheep long to be shepherded because they enjoy it. I was telling us, was it on Wednesday? I said, yeah, many years ago, when I was a young believer, under one of our, my fathers in the Lord, that the Lord used to bring me up years ago, we were going on an assignment one day. He was going to pray for somebody. He would carry me along. So as we were going, he was telling me that God will use me. I will become a minister of the gospel, this and that. I look at the man and I say, it's like, Baba, you are not serious. You know, you know at times when we say some things that some of you will look at it and say, this pastor is not serious, Gary. It's like some of you are looking at me now. Hallelujah. So I look at him, what is he saying? But years after, what he saw that I didn't see then came to be. But if I did not love to be under a shepherd in, how will the shepherd speak that that he has seen? Through revelation that the chief shepherd has shown him. That's why he spoke. 
you need to be under a coverage. Hallelujah. My late partner grandmom used to give an adage. She said, I'm Goromodelo Uriri. That's the kid I just spoke of to you. All right? He said, they are trying to rescue the chick from the hawk. And the chick is saying, you are not allowing me to go to the donkey to eat. What's the problem? Leave me alone. You know that's what some of us put off at times, so what do we put off? We may not see ahead. All right? But God at times will give people who are over set over you to see some things ahead that you are not seeing. And because of what they are seeing, they will not tell you. They may put some measures in place to guide you. But many a times, someone will say, This measure is too, is too what? Too strict. Let me lose. I'm a free man. Nobody is saying you are under bondage. It was you under a guy. They enjoy to be shepherded. Goats do not care about being under shepherd because they do not enjoy it. For sheep, they what? They enjoy it with gladness. And that's why I say, she will say, This is my church, my pastor, my brother, my sister in Christ. All right? But for goats, they don't enjoy being shepherded, they don't want to be under any leadership. That's the difference between goats and sheep. Sheep love still waters. They don't like strife or gossip. We are looking at the characteristics of what? Of a sheep. They love what? Still waters. That's what the psalmist said. He leads me beside what? He leads me beside what? Steal water. They don't like strife or gossip. They don't like trouble. But what happened to goats? They stir up strife because they, they thrive on it. Goats thrive on what? Trouble. So they stir it up. Because they strain it up, they get their own. You see them begin to jump here. Have you seen a goat before? Very naughty at times. Hallelujah. I thought they would do some things that you thought you around years ago, my, like I, I, I lived four years with my partner grandma. She had some goats that she was very dead. One of the days, I don't know what, what happened, food was left on the ground. My food or my cousin's food. Now one of them came and ate it up. Oh. And you cannot touch that goat because grandma looked at that goat as if, hey, this was a special. So you know what we do? Anytime grandma is out, we get them into the corridor, lock the back door at the front door, bring whip and get them very well. But tomorrow, that does not do the same thing again if you give them the chance. But when you see a sheep, I said, leave that place. The sheep will leave and will not return back. But goats, when you say, leave that place, they will go like this and turn back and look at you. When you say your attention is away from there, they come back. It's to do the same thing you are saying they should not do. They love, they thrive in strife. Hallelujah. Let's read Romans 16, verse 17 and 18. Romans 16, 17 and 18. Now, when we are saying these things, we are not being pointing anybody, but just look around. Do you have people like that that you see? Who thrive in strife? When there is strife, that's when they thrive. Mark that's what you say, the word of God says. Romans 16, 17, and 18 says, let's go. And now I make one more appeal. My dear and now I make one more appeal. My dear brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause division and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary. Watch out for them. To what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interest. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. Hallelujah. In fact, the way they come at times, they present things to you as if they are innocent. But at the end of the day, let's read Jude 1, 18 and, 18 and 19. Jude 1, 18 and 19. 
18 and 19 of Jude. 18 and 19. They told you that in the last days there will be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desire. There will be scoffers, all right? These people are the ones who are creating division among you. These people are the ones who are creating what? We are talking about the good now, all right? Among you, do what? They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. They follow their natural instincts. So as things come to their mind, they just bam. And what did he conclude in that verse? He said they don't have the spirit of God in them. Because if they have the spirit of God in them, they will not cause strife. Hallelujah. Goats stir up strife because they thrive on it. Whenever goats show up around the sheep, the pastor is to shield the sheep from the poison that the goat will spread. Because they carry poison. Hallelujah. Have you seen people in the church, where as soon as they come, they come in, it's trouble. If I saw you, you just, that's all you, you just want to avoid. Is that true? If I was to look at what Pastor says, it's strange. Maybe you have not experienced that, but, but I'm, I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah for the past 24 years plus pastoring. Even before I became a pastor, we are so, when I was uh, another member, we are people that at times, you just, you, when they come near you, like, you just relocate because it's trouble. Hallelujah, you can say it's trouble by trouble people. Hallelujah. So when we spot such people as a pastor and even you as a sheep, do what? Avoid them so that they don't get poisoned. What's the next characteristic of a sheep? They love to lie down in green pastures. The first one said they love to be what? To be shepherded. The second one said they love to lie down in green pastures. Green pastures represent the ministrations of their God-given pastor or their God-given ministers. The listening, the hear, the teaching, the preaching. They receive instructions. Those are Pastors, they receive. Goats are just passing through. They don't want to lie down. All right? They're just passing through. Like, like, what do I say? Just grab here, grab, grab, grab. Like hungry ones. Enough. Sheep eat the green pasture as much as they can. And they move elsewhere when it's time to move to the next place. And they don't just move. They are led by what? The shepherd. The shepherd says, okay, you have eaten enough grass here now, so let's what? Let's move to the next trees. I lived in the north, so I have an encounter with some of them, so I understand what I'm saying more better. Hallelujah. That's why they are called nomads. Real cattle are called nomads. I hope that word is correct in English. They move from place to place. Nigeria now, they call them headsmen. So they want to come to greener places. So during the, the, what do you call it now, the dry season, to eat up people's farm. They want green pastures for their sheep so that the sheep can grow healthy. Hallelujah. They eat green pastures as much as they can. They eat what as much as they can. And brethren, let me quickly say this. You can't grow with just Sunday, Sunday service messages. I'm also in Sunday school this morning. Test, 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 test time. You went to the school this morning, you wave to Jesus. Wow. Hallelujah. What time does Sunday school start? And we have had a Sunday school teacher say at times that a Sunday school class missing. It's like what? A treasure thrown in the ocean. You can never recover it back. It's lost. There's a place for your personal devotion. There's a place of what? Corporate fellowship. Sunday school, Sunday service message like this, music service, where we come to also hear the word. From all these things, there are pastors that help you to what? To grow. So when you are not there, what happens? You miss out on that spiritual meal for that day. And you know one funny thing? That the nutrient you will get from that diet for that day will be deficient in your, in your system. 
That's the truth. Except you look for by God's mercy, you're able to get that back again. Every opportunity you have to feed on the world, don't stay back. Make good use of it. Another thing that is called today is this. We enrich our physical body more at the detriment of our spiritual system. That's what we do. Hallelujah. Three square meal. Man must work. I'm not, I'm not saying don't eat. Hallelujah. We look nice. We put on good clothes. No problem. But what happened to our spirit? Our spirit man. How do you feed your spirit man? How do you grow? By what you feed on green pastures. The food you eat there. The what translates the to the strength. With the choir sang a song, no matter what may come across my way, my life is in my end. Before you can sing that song, you must have trusted in him. That no matter what happens, you will not be discouraged. Why do you say some people are easily discouraged today? Their spirit man is lean, hungry, starved. So when the challenges of life hit, they break down. But when you are fully fed, when the challenges come, you know where they are coming from. You'll be able to discern. You'll be able to know what, how to handle it. You'll be able to know the next and appropriate step to take. Feed on green pastures. Hallelujah. Goats just want to explore the pasture to get their goals without settling down and growing. Goats just want to use the anointing. But sheep settle down and grow with the ministrations of their God-given shepherd. They settle down and grow with the ministration of the words of their God-given shepherd. Praise the Lord. The third point, or the third characteristic, they never miss feeding time. Aha. I said that much earlier also in what I said earlier. They don't miss their feeding time. True sheep, or true sheep, sorry, they don't loiter. And they refuse to be distracted when feeding is going on. I remember those days in the boarding school. When it's dining time, you pick your, your cutlery and your plate, run to the dining. Everybody have their table, so you got your table. Then at the end of the day, we have two sharers. Those who will go and get the food, bring it on the table and share to all. You put your plate down and they share to everybody. But once in a while, I remember those days, so if you are impatient, I don't know if your school, those of you attended body, but I'm talking of the one I attended years ago, Command Secondary School. So we would have planned to show church orders. So they will come with big bowls, put it under the table. Drop your, your plate down for food. Some people will be agitating, will be agitating. The next thing you just say is hear action. When you hear action, everybody dip their bowl in the big bowl. Whatever you can pack is yours. So those who are not smart, who are not fast, they go hungry for that period. Hallelujah. That's what? <laughs> oh, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted. You know that's when you sit with a church, as many churches going on, they are The next day we touch you. They will touch you, uh, distract us. Church is, service is going on. Some people will be lurching about. Eh? If I catch you for after today, Sunday school is going on. You are outside lurching. Are you a trance? It's a trance. Who run away from school? When is supposed to be in school? So don't be spiritual trance in the church. Don't loiter around. When the word is coming, stay and receive your portion. Because you don't know when God may speak to you. You don't know when your precise word, the precise answer you're looking for may come. 
When you are missing in action, what happens? You miss out. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted. They are not distracted when feeding is going on. They stay as long as it takes until the service ends. Ah, I'm touching something again now. Hallelujah. They don't say, thank God, oh, we are almost through. Hallelujah. These are serious issues. How far you ought to go in the spirit will determine by how fed you are to the world. Why some of us are still standing? Well, because of what? It's because of what? We have been fed it while growing and what we are still feeding on till today. Challenges of life come in different ways to break us down. No matter what may come my way, the choir said what? My life is in, it's only those who have committed their life to Jesus that is, their life is in his hands. How can you stand? Or how do you stand? The sheep enjoy listening to their pastor preach the same way a man enjoys what? His wife's soup. Or those of us who are, who are seeing uh, mommy's pets, do you enjoy your mommy's food? That's where a sheep enjoys the what? The feeding from their pastor. First Peter 1, first Peter 2, 1, 1 and 2, first Peter 2, 1 and 2, Acts 2, 42, Acts 2, 42, first Peter 2, 1 and 2, quickly, anybody read for us? They never miss feeding time. Acts 2, 42 says, NLT, those who believe what Peter said were baptized and they added to the church that day 3,000 in all. 42. Oh, sir. <laughs> all the believers devoted themselves to the all apostles. All the believers devoted themselves to what? The apostles' teaching. What is the apostles' teaching? The, the word. word. They devoted themselves to the word. Hallelujah, that's the one I want to pick up from there. First Peter 2, 1 and 2. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done get with rid of all evil behavior, all right? Be done with all deceit. Be done with all deceit. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Jealousy. Jealousy. And all unkind speech. And all unkind speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk. Like newborn babies, what do you crave for? Pure. Pure. So there are some spiritual means that are what? Diluted. Pure. So I say, salvation is in my heart. You can't judge me by saying what I put on is there. Can you come? Out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible say what? By their fruit, the Bible say what? You shall know them. You can't be behaving otherwise and say, my inside is clean. And what we are seeing outward is the other way around. No. Action is louder than voice. Your body chemistry. Reviews what is going on inside of you. Hallelujah. Desire the words pure, pure. Why do you desire it? Why? Yes, ma'am. Have you gone from there? Why? So that it may, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So that you can grow. So, if you don't take the meal, what happens? Your growth is stunted. Now, we're not talking about physical growth now. We're talking about social growth. That is why, at times, when you have a decision to make between things that will, uh, that will enhance you spiritually and that, that will enhance you physically, many at times, you know what we go for. Hallelujah. You are faced with a decision. You may grow thereby when you desire what the sincere milk, pure milk of the world. We need it to grow. Hallelujah. Let's move on. The sheep come to church with their cutlery. Like I said, when we go to dining those days, you go with our what? Your plate and cutlery. That's how I got used to eating 
a bar, eating all the swallow food with cutlery. Till today, I, I can't use my hand again. That school turned me into that one, body school. But they say, come with a fork and knife, and this is so we go there. If they say, they swallow, they say, serve you. You have to use the thing to cut to eat. They come to church with their cutlery. So what's our cutlery today? Huh? My writing material. How many of us have writing materials I'm speaking now? No, no, I'm, I'm coming there. I'm still coming there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Writing material. I don't say typing material. <laughs> writing material. You have your notebook and you have your Bible. Huh? Okay, I know we are digital. Myself, I love advanced technology. You understand? You have your digital Bible. Where is it? You have your digital notebook. All right, we're going to do a test now. Sister, rejoice. Those who have the digital notebooks and are taking notes, raise your hand up. So how about the rest of us? <laughs> your cutlery for you to eat food, you didn't bring it? Or you're not using it? You're not hungry? Ah. Hallelujah. Our Bible, notebook, pen. For those of you who are digital, yeah, you have your, your digital Bible, your, your phone or your tab. Hallelujah. And your notes, your notepad or whatever you call it, to take notes. So when you go back home, you look through. What pastor have said today? Where am I found wanting? Where do I need to make adjustment? Hallelujah. That's how to grow. Amen. They don't place a time restriction on their shepherd. You want to learn. I remember one of the studies I'll, that I'm taking online. There's this lecture at that we call, it's also close by 10. You always go up beyond 10. <laughs> and it looks like for you to come out of the class, you always like insulting. You understand? But today, do we see at times when church size is going up, people just take off? Because of an appointment. A true child, though this one is well, the workers are training manner, we told all those of us who are workers. Your Sunday belongs to who? Belongs to God. You can't pick an appointment for Sunday. Because you don't know where the Lord may, may send you after service. And you don't know that's why God may, may decide to give to you after service. In those days, while growing up in the department there or in the youth department then, after service, everyone that comes as first time to the church, we follow them home. To know their place. Brother follow brother. Sister follow sister. <laughs> that way of, the way some of you are looking at me, say, hey, pastor. <laughs> or at times we pair them. A sister and a brother follow, go and follow. Up. And that's how, we, that's how we grew. We follow up each other. Until they become members of the church, full-fledged members. Hallelujah. Some believers love short sermons. And their mind drifts during the sermon. They forget their Bible at all, or bring only a, a tiny what New Testament Bible to church, and they complain at the end of the day. Why would your life be the way it is? New Testament. Is anybody here with New Testament? I know. I don't think so. Hallelujah. Sheep produce sheep. That's another characteristic. God Lord made mention of that earlier. Hallelujah. Is it the shepherd that produces sheep? Let's talk of that. Yes. Now, when I say sheep, what do I understand by the word sheep? Okay. 
So let's look at it from the sheep shepherd point of view and bring it into the church view. Naturally, uh, the sheep animals, animals, sheep, they have to reproduce. Like, they have to walk. And when they reproduce, they produce sheep, not other animals. So, yeah. ah, I, lo I love that. When they reproduce, a sheep doesn't repro reproduce goat. Right? Doesn't give back to goat. Okay? A true sheep will have a track record of bringing other people to church. Hello? Can I do a test? Can I do a test? Where is the sheep that you have reproduced? For the period they have been around. Hallelujah. It's a simple test. Somebody must have invited you to come in at the point in time. That person is not the one who brought you in. So you will likely say you are the sheep that that person what brought into the fold. So what sheep? Where is your own sheep? It's outside. <laughs> <Jama <laughs> the sister said it's in Jamaica. Hallelujah. It's in Jamaica. A true sheep will have a track record. There's one of our sisters, she's not in church today. They are still give kudos, even though she has relaxed. Unlike before. I can say, I can mention people who has who are who are bona fide members of the church for years. That God used her to, to bring them into the church. Come, come, come. We invite them, we invite them, we invite them. Hallelujah. There are people, we are not saying go and snatch other people, other members of other churches. That's not what we are saying. There are people around us who are not going to church. Am I right? Many who don't have a church. Talk to them about Jesus. Invite them. Don't want to leave your church and come and join our church. That's not what I'm saying. Do you know one good thing? When we first started, when I was about to start the church in Guyana years ago, I met Reverend Phillips. By God's grace, it was one God used for my coming to Guyana. I said, please, I need to start up the church for our city in Guyana. I need you to recommend a lawyer person that can work with me. And the man said, Pastor, you want to hear the truth? I said, yes, sir. He said, if you recommend anybody to me, I'd best will disappoint me. He said, what? Go and train your own person. Wow. I took that word by one side, and I held on to it. That's the truth. Because you want to get somebody from another place, do you know what they have been taught? Do you know what they believe in? Maybe they don't believe in the Trinity. Who knows? Maybe they don't believe in speaking in tongues. Then you have problems. When you are started speaking in tongues, you look at them and say you are demonized. Something is wrong with you. Hallelujah. Because of what? What they have been indoctrinated with. But when you get a convert and begin to groom that convert, carry them to workers in training class, sorry, believers class, baptismal class, workers in training, by the time they finish baptism, uh, believers' class and baptism, they know they are right from their left. Hallelujah. They have track record of bringing people to church. Otherwise, they are not committed to the church. So if you are committed to the church, one of your primary assignments is what? Is what? Is what? Let's talk now. Where is the mic? Produce. Shepherd feeds green pasture to the sheep for growth. The shepherd will what? Feed green pastures to the sheep for what? For growth. But the sheep are to bath other sheep. So as you eat the food, you get nourished and you give birth to other sheep. That is, you minister to others 
The fastest way to kill a sheep is sheepfold. It's easy to bring more, more sheep to the sheepfold. That's the fastest way to kill it. When you don't bring more sheep into the sheepfold, what happens? The sheepfold extincts. Go to extinct. Extinction. Additional to salvation is what we call the growth process. Not just the birth of physical disorder, got pregnant and gives birth. No. Addition to growth. And that's what happened in Acts chapter, 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 chapter 3. God began to add to the church as many that what will be saved. Afterward, they ministered the word. There was an addition. God did the addition. But we are to do the ministry. And those that God wants to add to our ministry in the world, they will hear the word and the word, they will be added to the church. We have the assignment to, do, to preach the word, to teach the word, to minister the word. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Every true sheep has the obligation to invite people to church and disciple them. It's our obligation. Mm-hmm. Yes, let's read. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Yes. NLT says, Therefore go and make disciples of Therefore all nations. Therefore go and make. Who is he talking to there? We you and I. He's not talking to pastors. He's not talking to evangelists alone. He's not talking to prophets alone. He said, therefore go. So you put your name there. Therefore miracle go. All right. Therefore, Balaji, we go. Preach the word. To, um, the gospel to, make to every. Nations. Every. To all, to all the nations. To all the nations. I love the way he says. He's not saying to a nation. He to all the nations. There's no boundary. There's no limit to how far you can go. You are the one that can limit yourself. All right, yes, ma'am. I'm baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Amen. When you go, he's there with you to the end of the age. Let me take the last point for today because of time. The sheep love to be shared. Shared as in S H E A R E D. So, what does that mean? Anyone want to help me out? What does that mean? To like be pruned, basically, like pruned. Pruned. <laughs> uh, I'm hearing another definition now. You are giving us a real definition. Sir? Yes, I'm supposed to say something here, sir. Yes. Like yes, sir. Um, dressing them, um, their skin, taking if everything is right with their body. And I feel Hallelujah. like it's groom. So you All groom right. sheep. Yes. So, like, you groom sheep so that they don't overheat. So, it's more of grooming. So, you're taking out the things that have grown out of them, you're shedding them out. Literally, what does that mean? Let's get it literally first. Then we'll bring it to the spiritual concept. <laughs> Literally, no, pruning is too hard. Yeah, literally removing the dead skin. Removing the skin, the, yeah. the is it for? The for, the for. Yes, taking it out. That's what it means. And that's also what they use for wool, for some clothing and, and stuff like that. The sheep love to, to, do, to share it. Hallelujah. And there are many advantages to that for them. You had the story in Genesis 22 when Father Abraham was on Mount, uh, was it Mount Moriah now? When he went to offer Isaac. And the angels will come to him saying, What? Don't touch the boy. Say, Look behind you, there's what? There's a ram, what? Caught in what? In the ticket, according to King James. The ram was caught in the ticket. And they use the ram. So when you, the wools are not shared, it is easier for the sheep to be caught in the ticket. And those are schemes of the enemy at times that hinder them from moving forward. And it injures at times. Hallelujah. You can write down John chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. John 10, 1 to 4. There is a difference between sharing and fleecing. Fleecing happens when a robber steals from the sheep. Fleecing. F L. Double E C I N G. 
It happens when a robber steals from the sheep. All right? But sharing means the sheep is blessed enough to contribute to the kingdom. The sheep is what? Blessed enough to contribute to the kingdom. A two sheep rejoice at the opportunity to give to us a project in the sheepfold. They are, they are, they are, they, cheerfully, they want to reach out. Hallelujah. When sheep refuse to be shared, the excess wood may cause them to be trapped in the thicket. Like I said earlier. So beware of attracting an unwanted attention of false friends and thieves with the resources God has given to you for his work. Don't attract unnecessary attention. Hallelujah. Even when you have more than enough, be moderate in what you do. Be what? Be moderate. Sharing includes giving offering, tithing, partnership, getting involved in helping the less privileged in the church. Those are other areas that the sheep can, can share. Hallelujah. I'm concluding this part by saying, by the blessings of God, believers grow financially. But who places the greatest demand on your wood? That's the question. By the blessings of God, believers grow what? Financially. But who places the greatest demand on your wood? Is it God? Is it man? Or material things? Who places what? Greatest demand on your wood. Every true sheep has wood to share. So who places the greatest demand? God? Man? Man or what? Hallelujah. God, man, or material things? God, man, or material things? Who places the pre pre premium? Who places the greatest demand? So now that's a question you have to answer for yourself. No, I, I, I'm not saying you should give me the answer. Hallelujah. Because even before you answer, God knows the one that places the great demand on your wood. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here for today. And when next we come, we continue from there by God's grace. Any question? Yes. Any question? Um, I wanted to ask if sharing the sharing of yes. the wool, it can also um, translate as like cleansing. That, like that, cleansing, like in the spiritual meaning, like cleansing the sheep. We are looking at that in the area of using what you have to benefit the kingdom. Because when the wool is taken out, it is used on for other things, for other to benefit from. So but when fleecing takes place, is when what? Thieves come in in the night and just zoom. That's what the devil does. The other word is John 10 10. What does he say? The thief comes in order to steal. So when in the place of fleecing on the sheep, as they're using their, they will take time to, to really take the wool out easily. So in the process of what, of taking out the wool because they are stealing, it will happen at times. The skin of the sheep may be caught, wounded. Hallelujah. The thief coming of all to steal, to kill, and to what? To destroy. That's what they do. And do we have churches today that feed some people on sheep, on innocent sheep? Hallelujah. Do we? I don't preach about churches or against churches, so please, don't get me wrong. But you look at some, the antecedents of some churches. You go to a place, at times you, you, give, you collect, they collect about five to six different offerings. Amen? Oh, empty your pocket. Use different gimmicks to siphon. That's fleecy. Praise the Lord. But when God blesses you as a sheep and you want to be part of the kingdom assignment, 
and you bring out willingly the God-given assignment, the God-given venture. That's your sharing. That's not fleecing. Any question? Any other question? So, if no, if no other question, the question I want to ask us now is this. Which category of this that we are set about the sheep do we work with? Or what are those acts of it that are still missing in our lives? I want us to ponder on why. For those who are taking notes, for those who didn't take notes because they didn't come with their cutleries, thank God for technology today. You can go and watch this, this program over again on my YouTube page. Or you can watch on our Facebook uh, page. Or you can even go if you don't have data or much uh, Wi Fi or whatever. Go to the audio, audio channel and listen to the audio with your data. Hallelujah. And put yourself, take a, take a, take a recap of your life. Where am I? As a sheep. I've identified myself as a sheep in the, in the sheep fold. What are my contributions? into this sheepfold. How do I enjoy the world that I'm being fed with? How am I affecting the kingdom? Am I only thinking of myself or thinking about the kingdom of God also and his advancement? Let's hold our heart as we talk to the Lord. Father, I need your help. Whatever areas I found one thing, as a true sheep, Lord, I come before you. Mercy upon my life. In any area, I found one thing. In all these characteristics that we have mentioned of a sheep, anyone that is lacking in my life, Father, help me to begin to build them up. Help me to begin to build them up. Let's talk to the Lord. Help me to begin to build them up. Say, Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving me. Forgive me for every time I have behaved wrongly. Forgive me for every time I have behaved wrongly. As a sheep in your chief fold, have mercy on me, Lord. 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 Have mercy upon me, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the Jesus. mighty name of Jesus. Have mercy. Forgive me any area, any time I behave wrongly. As have a mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And have mercy. Call upon the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Grant me the boldness and utterance. 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 To be able to witness. To be able to witness. And lead others. And lead others. To you, Lord. To you, Lord. Grant me the boldness and utterance. Grant me the boldness and utterance. To be able to witness. To be able to witness. And lead others. And lead others. To you, Lord. To you, Lord. Grant me the boldness, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I will never be shy anymore. Grant me, Lord, the boldness. I will never be ashamed to be. Declare your word to others. And all trust. Grant me the others about to you. To minister to others. About your love and your saving grace. To others about your love and your saving grace. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is my Christ. I call you, Lord. Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Last lesson, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I ask that you give me grace. Ask for grace. To be a model example. To be a model example. Of a Christian. Of a Christian. In faith, in faith, in words, in words, and in deeds, and in deeds, call upon the Lord, the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Give me the grace to be a model example, be a model example of a Christian, of a Christian in, faith, in faith, in, in words, words, and in deeds, and in deeds. Let my life depict you, oh Lord Jesus Christ. Let Give me the grace, oh Lord, depict you, oh Lord. Give me the grace, in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. be a model Christian. Thank you for my words and deeds in the name of Jesus. Let's take that song. Oh, by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Show thy face in my heart. Oh, if I lead the shepherd. 
For your voice, listen for your voice. Wherever you may lead, wherever you may lead, lead me on, lead me on, lead me on. Oh, by the gentle breeze, the shepherd of my soul. Is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain, take over, or value dark and deep? The shepherd of my soul will be my guide. Whatever areas are messed up, whatever areas are shepherd of my soul, shepherd of my soul. I give you full control. I, I give you, you full control. Whatever you may lead, whatever you may lead, let my spirit fall. Awake in the I day. will follow. I have made a choice. I have made a choice to listen to listen to your voice. I will not miss wherever you may. them to your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, we pray. Thank you for watching this video. If you have been blessed by this message and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, can you say this simple prayer after me? The Lord Jesus, I come before your throne of mercy. I confess my sin and come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Let your blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary cleanse me from all my righteousness. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If you have said that prayer along with me now, I want to say congratulations to you. For more information and inquiry, please contact us via the information on the screen. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. God bless you.